everyone. Um, I'll do this again later in the video and I apologise. Um, say hello because um, I have to do the beginning of the video at the end of the tutorial. So I can basically show you what we are making in the tutorial. So this is what we're going to be making today. Um, I'm just going to show you how I do them. And I'd also like to show you where the idea came from. Um, I got a jumper for Christmas from Fat Face and this was the tag on the jumper. So I've kind of used this idea to make some tags for journals. And obviously there's a lot of lot of things you can do with these, as my old um, lecturer used to say, it has a lot of legs. So there's a long way this could go, and I'm sure that you'll all think of lots of things that you can do to um, kind of make these your own and make them better. So let's get on. Oh, I'm not saying hello yet. Um, uh, cardstock, so you need a cut on board, or you can use your board and a knife. And the size that I've made mine is seven by 18 centimeters or two and three quarters by seven inches. So I'm going to start with my seven centimeters and I've got everything around me so I'm prepared, but um, it does mean things are a little bit tight in terms of working space. So we've got seven centimeters wide and we're gonna make these 18 centimeters long. Make sure I'm actually in frame. Yep. So we can get rid of that one for now. So what I do is take my large corner punch for the background and punch all the corners. And it gets stuck. So once I've got my corners punched, I take a pair of scissors and just distress the edges. I know there are tools to do this and I've got one somewhere. <laughs> well, it's actually a nail file, a foot file I use to do this, but I'm not sure where it is. So I'm using scissors. Be careful, please, if you do this. <laughs> I'm actually talking to myself as much as you guys. Because I'm a little bit dangerous with things sharp. Well, I'm fairly dangerous with things that are not sharp, too. Right, so, part one. Now, I'm just going to ink the edges. You can do this later but I do it now as well because I forget a lot of inking a lot of the time. And the other thing I forgot is, oh no, I can see it. Okay, so that's the first thing. Um, and then I'm just gonna lightly distress, blend a little bit around there, just to give it a background for the next thing I'm gonna do. I'm not going right down to the bottom because that's gonna be covered up. Okay, so now we've got this. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna do a little bit of stamping on here and I've got this stamp that I got from Mucky Stamps. They're on Etsy and they are absolutely brilliant. Um, I've got the cheaper version, which doesn't come backed onto a wooden block. So it's a little bit more difficult to use, but it's still cheaper. And I'm just gonna stamp up the top and pop on my block. Mm. 
<laughs> Sorry about that. Um, where were we? <laughs> Stamping. Um, yeah, I think we'll do it on the next one too. So it's just to give it a little bit of interest at the back. And now what we need to do is make our little pockets. And I've got um, Edith Holden here. Just find a little bit that might look nice. You can use the words as well, um, so that kind of looks looks quite nice using the words, and it's a good way of using up some of those kind of plain pieces from some of the books you might have. So I'm going to cut that out there, and I think I'm going to have a quick look how much pocket I want. About six centimeters. So just cut that out there. And we want it about seven, seven centimeters wide because that was the width of our tag. Make that actually use that piece there. side okay so um, we'll take our corner punch again it's up here doesn't it and what I do is I'm just going to ink along the top because we're not going to be able to get to that later this bit um, I'm just using this Tombow glue because it's really accurate um, I'm going to stitch it so I'm not expecting this to hold it and because it's accurate I can go right along the very edge so when I use the sewing machine I'm not actually sewing over the glue which I really like and it's very easy to clean off this glue too I wouldn't um, I'd use it for paper, I wouldn't use it for anything stronger than paper. So line that up, get rid of the excess, which has quite a lot. <laughs> so you can see that's starting to take shape. We've got that piece, the kind of background of the tag ready for the next step. So this one, um, what I'm going to use for the pocket on this is some of the Tim Holtz Wallflower Vellum. Um, and you know you get those little, little the pages with the smaller squares. I've just cut one of those out with a pattern. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up on my, on my board. So I've got a line that I can follow. Um, sorry about the state of my board, it's rather disgusting. I'm just going to use that and again I'm going to go round the very very edge so my, other, my other half's creeping around because he's not usually about when I do a video he doesn't have to he's going to have a little cough <laughs> okay. and like I said this is going to be sewn so I can use that line that straight line to make sure my pocket is going to be straight. I could probably lift that up a bit, actually, a little bit. Oh, I hate it when things are not straight, so I'm going to have to really go by eye. And again, this is going to be sewn, so we don't have to worry too much. This is the first time I've used this Tombow glue on vellum, so I'm not sure what it's going to be like. 
hopefully it won't wrinkle too much, it is at the moment. Um, you can use, um, yeah it is wrinkling up, I wish I'd have used the Fabri-Tac because that actually works perfectly with this. Um, so, that's, yeah, I'm not happy with that so I'm going to pull that off, remove that glue. So, little tip, don't use Tombow glue with vellum. I'm just going to cut this extra bit out here. And one glue that I do know works really well is the old fabric tack. So I'm going to do that again. I might delete that from the video. Sorry. When I edit later, it gets quite gunky, this fabric tack. And it's um, a little bit more difficult to get a very thin layer and get it right at the very edge because you get little strings. A bit higher with the pocket this time. Probably stuck this to my board. Wouldn't be a video if it didn't have mistakes would it <laughs> yeah that's not too bad and you do get a, it grabs really really quickly and it gets it gives you a nice neat nice neat um edge you don't get that sorry i don't know why i'm doing that off camera so just cut the excess off obviously be a bit more careful than i'm being right now and then just go around that edge. You can see I haven't actually cut very close to that. Probably not the best scissors to use. There we go. That's wrinkling a little bit too. Okay, so obviously you could use um, your own handmade vellum, I don't think I'll put glue all the way around that. Um, you could use handmade vellum for this or um, any types of paper, book pages, you could double up book pages and make the background with it. So that's um, our tags, we've got the first part of our tags um, made. Um, what I'm going to do before I stitch around the edge is just make the holes. So again I use the board to line it up use my ruler um, I want them roughly there so that's in the middle I just use my pokey tool it looks level where I am I hope it's level where you are and I just go actually that's probably a bit too high a bit too low it's a little bit up a bit Yep, so one and a half from the centre either side is where I go. So put the two guideline holes in. And do the same again on this one. And then what I do is, I don't have a cropper dial. I have two other fairly useless tools actually, I've got to be honest. <laughs> um, I just use my hole as a guide and this is where my tool is rubbish because it only cuts half the hole so I have to give it a really good wiggle around to get it and it still doesn't come out. Give that a pick. And the same for the other hole. Give that a wiggle around. I hope this is not going in and out of focus. I can't actually see. I've got a different setup for the camera when I do tutorials, and it's uh, too high for me to see unless I want to stand up and do it, and that's a bit difficult. So, same for this one. I 
I'm thinking about getting a crocodile so if anyone has got anything good or bad to say about them please let me know help me make my decision because I certainly don't like I've bought so many different tools to make holes and um, put the eyelets in and I don't have a lot of luck with any of them to be perfectly honest so, there we go we've got we've got our holes um, so obviously I'm going to sew round these but before I do that I'm going to make um, this little part to go onto the onto the hangy bit another technical term there hangy bit so I take my cardstock this is again not the most technical way of working but this is how I've been doing it because I want this as thin as I can next to the quote or whatever it is you've decided to hang off your tag and I can make that still a little bit smaller I'm just going to cut that bit and we want to leave enough room to put our hole and our eyelet so we don't want to cut it too close for that piece and then we'll do our second one I'm not very uh, maths, maths orientated so I don't do a lot of measuring so with this one I'm going to use my small corner chomper and again they do struggle a little bit through this 300 GSM card but I think that's because um, my corner things have really been through their paces <laughs> they've done a lot of, a lot of, a lot of corners, a lot of cutting so we now have those. So what I'm going to do is I've already inked around the little quotes. I tore them rather than cut them. Sorry. So, okay. Um, I'm going to ink around the edges of these pieces. so it takes that harsh kind of cream colour away right so that's that done now for the um, to glue these on because it is literally just paper um, I find that a glue stick is actually really good for this I'd only ever use it for paper and for something like this but you get a really nice flat even kind of layer of glue and what happens is you don't get um, you don't get any bubbles you don't get any kind of um, wrinkles it's just so flat and even the torn edge sticks really really well I use um, the blue stick from blue tack and I also like this one the yoohoo stick that's really good as well I, I don't use the um, the Pritt stick and some of the other kind of cheaper brands but I really like this one and because it's blue you can see exactly where it's gone um, but it is completely clear once it's dry so don't be afraid of using a glue stick if it's a good one okay so there we go we've got our two hangy bits now this one I'm just going to do um, by eye it doesn't have to be um, uniform because obviously you've only got one hole and because there we go 
see any other problems you do get lots of pieces of paper stuck in your hole <laughs> so I'll just do the next one take my eyelets and I'm going to go for um, go to the brass just pop that in to the hole these are quite small these little eyelets so they work really well with like this cardstock this one's not going in as well there we go so then I'll take my other fairly useless tool. I actually can't use any of these now because they just don't they don't cut whole. I could chew through a piece of paper quicker than this cuts through it. But it does okay for this job. So we've now got our eyelets in ready for our hangy pieces and as you can see they will kind of hang here. Okay, so the next step is I need to put this through the sewing machine. So I will go away and do that and then be right back. Hi, I'm back. So I've just stitched around the edges. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and not turn the camera off, hopefully. Right, so... Um, now all we need to do is pop in the eyelets. So this one is a brass colour. So I'm just going to match that up. Pop the eyelets in. It's exactly the same as what we did on the little tag. And these ones look like they're brass ones too. So they might be silver. No, are they? Is that silver? No. So just pop those in. Take our pants tool. Squeeze those into place. If you haven't got one of these and the eyelets, you can just use reinforcers round the holes. So now we're ready to thread them. And I've just got some garden twine. So I'm going to show you two ways that I have used to do this. So the first way is fold the string in half. It's like you're threading a, um, a tag, a general tag. Pop that through your hole and you've got your tag like this and then you take one half and pop it through that side one half and pop it through that side and then what I do is just hold it roughly in the middle lay that face down and I just whoop, move it around so it's not going to be in the middle anymore <laughs> lay that down and I just use my hand to hold that while I tie a double knot. Now you could finish this in lots of different ways. So you could knot it at the top there so it hangs or you could cut that off and you can use that just to pin in your in your journals or as a gift tag or whatever it is you're going to use them for. So this one is a little bit different. I'm just going to literally thread it through the centre of our hangy bit and thread it through the tag and then this side I will hang pop through there pull that to roughly the length you want again fold it over and just tie that off it doesn't matter if it moves this one because it will hang it will just always find its centre and then this one I am going to Pop a little knot in the top and just cut that. So we have that tag. 
So there are our finished tags. And what I'm gonna just do quickly is show you a few of the others I've um, been working on. So, you know, there's lots of things that we can do with this kind of idea. So, um, I've made this one, and this has been made with obviously the Tim Holtz wallflower. This was a piece of cream cardstock, and I've popped one of the, let me zoom in a little bit more, sorry. I've popped on a tea card, vintage tea card, so obviously you can use the back of that for journaling. You've also got room here, you've got a little, you've got your pocket. Um, this one I haven't done on the back, I've left this one as it is, but there are other ways you can use the back to write on. Um, this one is obviously the same as the one we have just made. This one uh, went a little bit wrong because I forgot to put two holes at the top. So what I did was just added a Tim Holtz die cut onto the pocket of that one. This one, again, it's similar to the one we've made. It's just showing you that you can use the pocket. Um, but this one, I've threaded it back through on itself and made a bow. This one, let's zoom out again now. No? Sorry guys, not very technical as you know. Um, I haven't got the pocket on this one because I really liked the pattern on the bottom of the of the flat of the paper but this one I've just hung a um, another Tim Holtz wallflower on and again you can still write on the back and this one I've also backed onto card um, actually this was a cream heavyweight paper so you can use that to write on the back this one another similar idea hung a, a Tim Holtz wallflower piece so you've got that and on the back I've also stuck some tea stained paper so you can write on that one and this one, um, I went a little bit further on this one because I've backed the whole tag onto the um, cardstock and I've used two of the Tim Holtz on here, stamped the cardstock and I got this brilliant stamp from Suzanne Thomas, so thanks for that Suzanne. Um, and again, you know, I've just popped this in to show you that you've also got room for a fairly big tag actually in there and you can write on the back of that and you can write on the back of that. So this one's really quite sturdy, it would probably need to go in a fairly big journal. So that's um, those done. Thanks for joining me for the tutorial, I hope you um, can use this idea for lots of things for yourself and um, I'll see you soon, bye!